is a chapter 6 video um, we're looking at designing classes so the whole idea around this class is to improve the coding and how the code is written we're looking at coupling cohesion responsibly driven design and reuse as well so if we're going to be critical of certain how code is written and um, we need some criteria so we've got coupling cohesion and also reusability and responsibly driven classes so one of the first main ones to consider is coupling so coupling refers to links between separate units of a program classes that depend on other classes really tightly um, are known as tightly coupled um, and in order to get an idea of coupling class diagrams will give you a rough sort of uh, hint at how the coupling is so loose coupling if, if you've got a program with loose coupling um, we can understand one class without reading others so uh, so a specific class won't be really dependent on another class another thing which shows uh, loose coupling is changes to one specific class won't affect another class so if you have to make a change and then lots of changes need to be made then that is tight coupling and we don't want that we want loose coupling loose coupling will increase maintainability because if you want to go in and make a change then you'll only need to make it for that one class like I say we aim for loose coupling tight coupling um, if you have to make a, a, a chain, one single little change which then causes changes throughout a big chain, changes to other classes, changes from one method will divide changes to another method and so on and so forth. Um, if you have a large amount of changes for one change that is tight coupling and is not good. Um, it's harder then uh, to understand classes in their isolation so if you've got a tightly coupled classes it's difficult to see what one class does and what the other class does. If they're sort of closely related it doesn't uh, they're, they're tightly coupled and it's not good. Uh, and it's also then, if the flow of control between objects of different classes is complex, um, then it's, it's, it's tightly coupled. So we try and avoid this tightly tight coupling. A um, little bit of advice on coupling. Don't include public fields unless really, really necessary. So have all of your fields private. And only includes methods which users of the class need to see. So really um, question why a class or why a method would need to be public and only if it's part of the interface and part of the whether the user needs to really use it. Otherwise just make all of your fields and methods private. So cohesion. So cohesion and coupling are often talked about in uh, the same sort of sentences and discussions. So cohesion is all about, um, it's, it's led really from the desire for wanting to reuse classes over and over again because that is a good thing, it means writing code less. So the way we do this is we try and get an individual class or an individual unit and have that as responsible for one clearly defined class. If uh, we've got an application where each unit is responsible for one logical task, each class is, is responsible for one specific thing then this has high cohesion so you can take one of your classes out of your project and then use it in another project that would be a highly cohesive class and uh, part of a highly cohesive project and we aim for this high cohesion so units can apply to classes methods and packages so if we have high cohesion, it makes it a lot easier to understand what a class or method does. You can write specific things at the start of the method in your documentation which says this class does X. It doesn't say this class does X with the help of Y and a little bit of help of Z. Sometimes you will maybe need to do that, but if we can keep try and keep away from that, then th that's better. It's If you use descriptive names for variables, methods and classes, it, it's much easier to give these descriptive names. It's, it's difficult to have a method which says this method adds two numbers, multiplies two numbers, and divides two numbers. It's much better if you say this method adds two numbers. And with high cohesion, like I say, we get this um, uh, state where we can actually reuse classes and methods. So yeah, we aim for high cohesion. So things which uh, will cause uh, loose cohesion it is if methods perform multiple tasks. We want to have methods which do one single very obvious task not multiple things and classes uh, which have a clear logical identity and we can say what what their what their job is uh, we have a we aim to avoid loosely cohesive classes and methods 
So in terms of cohesion, key methods short and to the point. If you find that your method's getting longer, then it's probably because it's doing some. It's probably because it's doing more than one task, unless of course it's a a mathematical type function which requires a lot of mathematical type work for example if you're doing a big equation as one method that would require a lot of code but otherwise generally you shouldn't have too many lines of code and another thing is complex methods are difficult to understand when revisiting them later so if you've got fairly straightforward methods then when you look back at your code and believe me when you look back at your code even if it's a day two days later you want it to be clear and to the point Cohesion applies at a couple of levels, at the class level and at the method level. Again, one, one class should represent one single well-defined well entity, and at the method level, uh, the classes should be responsible for one clearly defined class. Code duplication. So code duplication can happen all over the place, at the method level, at the class level, and using two different classes which are very similar. So we want to have it so that we don't see the same code written on multiple lines. Um, it's, it's an indicator of bad design, it makes maintenance really hard because if you want to change one little thing then you often got to change a lot of lines of code. It can lead to introduction of errors during maintenance and one of the things which you'll see is early small amounts of duplication can lead to later big amounts of duplication. So if you make the, the duplication when you're writing small then later on that should, it should keep sort of look after itself. RDD, uh, Responsibly Driven Design. Um, so the question is, where for a specific class should the data be kept? Um, uh, is another question, where should we add a new method, which class? So the way you sort of direct the answer to these type of questions which you'll have when writing your code is each class should be responsible for manipulating its own data. So methods for data which are stored in an object should be in that object. You shouldn't have one object doing work for another object. So each class should be responsible for doing the methods on its own data. Uh, the class that owns the data should be responsible for its processing. So classes need to own its own, um, keep its own data and do all its processing on that data. Um, and, and this will lead to RDD, which is this responsibly driven design. Point here again about coupling. Uh, one aim of reducing coupling and responsibly driven design is to localize change. Again, this tries to keep it so that when we are making changes to projects and classes and methods, we keep it just within that section there and rather than making changes to a lot of other areas of code. So in terms of designing for your projects, and you've got to do two things really. First of all, you've got to think ahead. When you're designing your class, when you're thinking about how your class is going to work in the future, um, then you, you, you plan for change so you can, you can keep that in mind when you're doing your code. Remember, with software engineering, if code is not easily maintainable, then it generally dies. So we like to have code and programs which we can go into work with maintain, add new features, remove bugs, all of these things and in order to do that we need to be thinking ahead as to what potentially could happen. Now the other thing you have to bear in mind is is refactoring. So what we need to do as we're writing our code and we might start to write duplications for a number of lines of code but once you start to see that happening then think to yourself is there a better way of doing this? Can I refactor my code and can I improve the way in which it's written. So refactoring literally means rewriting your code so it's more readable um, and easier to maintain and improving of your code. When you do refactor your code, so you've gone in, you've written a load of uh, lines of code which create a number of different objects and then you ultimately decide, well hang on a minute, I'm just going to use an array list to store all these objects rather than having individual variable names for these specific objects. Say that might be one refactoring thing that you do. So once you've refactored it, then the main thing then is you've got to go in and test it. Um, you need to maintain the functionality of the previous functionality but then you're just improving how the code is written. You test before you refactor and then you test after you refactor. 
So now we've got a couple of uh, design questions here. Um, how long should a class be and how long should a method be? And now we can answer these questions in terms of cohesion and coupling. Finally, some design guidelines then. A method is too long if it does one, one more, more than one logical task, and a class is too complex if it represents more than one logical entity. So these guidelines, which are, are pretty useful, they are leaving much open to the designer, so you've got to keep that in mind. Talk to your colleagues, talk to your lecturers, talk to each other to try and work out ways of reducing complexity, having um, loosely coupled classes, um, and having um, good cohesion in your classes. See you next time.